Hey guys, this is Jason from Overhype Studios and we're here with another video showing the progress we've been making on the game and uh, new features, new enemies and so on. To showcase all the new features we have put in a new scenario in the game, it's called Dead Canyons. The story behind it is that a patrol has been uh, missing uh, in the rugged canyons and we, or our group of battery brothers, is tasked to um, have a look and find the patrol. And maybe you can anticipate what we're gonna find. So first thing um, you're gonna notice is the new layout of the character screen and inventory screen. We've taken all the um, character stats and put them on the left, bottom left side. Um, and we've made more room for the inventory and now you can see all the all your battle brothers and your inventory and your character stats active skills, passive skills and um, the actual character's inventory on the same page uh, I think this adds a lot of um, usability and it's uh, way easier to see what kind of equipment your brothers have and what you have left in your stash and um, get an easy overview over all your assets um, the next big thing we have in the game is the perks system. The perks is on this uh, tab right here. You can see three major columns of perks. It's a uh, offense, defense and utility. You gain a perk when your character actually levels up. We now also have experience in the game. Uh, you gain experience by participating and surviving of course missions and killing enemies. With the experience you gain um, points to put into these perks and there's a max level of 10 uh, at the moment this character is level 1 as it's shown here but for um, showcasing reasons we've given all our characters the 10 perk points um, to gain some perks you have to put um, 3 points in the first in the first sector and this will unlock the second one here you have to take 2 and this will unlock the third if you take a look here, it says it needs 5 perks in this column um, to unlock the third level. Let's take a closer look at the perks. Um, for now they all have the same icons, as you can see, but we're working on that. But um, the perks themselves are already in the game and working. Okay, so now I don't want to go into too much detail on all the perks, um, but we have a lot of uh, specialization options for two-handed uh, weapon guys or for um, uh, range guys. I'm just gonna give you a small example. We're gonna take this guy with a two-handed weapon and maybe you know that if you have played the demo yet you know that the guy with the two-handed weapon and the heavy armor let's actually give him like even more armor like this and the lamella armor and now he has like really low fatigue and his problem is that he will run out of fatigue very fast or he will accumulate a lot of fatigue actually and we don't need the two-handed guy to specialize in offense because he's, he does insane damage with his greatsword and the main problem is that when he ru he's running out of fatigue uh, that he's not a able to do any attacks at all so we have a close look at the utility tree over here Utility tree is um, this one, for example, bags and belts. It unlocks uh, additional inventory slots for the character. Rebound increases uh, fatigue regeneration, which is pretty, pretty handy. Um, I think this one's pretty fitting. Uh, if an attack misses, it costs less fatigue. We're gonna take that one. This is especially useful for um, characters who can only do one attack and that costs a lot of fatigue and that's definitely the case for the uh, two-handed guy. Um, what else? Let's take um, two-hander. Uh, all fatigue costs for two-handed weapon skills are reduced as well. And let's take the rebound. You know, just to, um, to showcase a little of uh, some of the skills, we're gonna take some more. We're gonna take Fortified Mind because this is one of the skills that actually interacts with, uh, with our new bravery and morale system so maybe we can show that and maybe Pathfinder and now we can unlock the third, the, the, uh, third tier and then we're gonna take yeah probably the Artful Dodger 
it allows the character to get out of the zone of control of enemies, which can be really handy for a two-handed guy because he's, he's very, very weak on the defense. Now we have four points left. We're going to put them into defense because we really don't need any more offense with this guy. Okay, what do we have here? We have um, uh, this one. This is very handy and plays into the um, fatigue. Uh, penalty thing as well. It reduces the fatigue from armor one. We're gonna definitely gonna take that one. Then you can see his uh, fatigue increasing here, and it's maximum fatigue. Um, what do we have here? Stat fast. Getting hit by regular attacks does not cause a loss of fatigue anymore. This is actually pretty handy for a two-handed guy because he doesn't have a lot of fatigue and he's um, getting hit all the time. Yeah, let's take that one. Okay, two left. Unbending more hit points. Why not? Let's take that one. And now we have one left. Shield expert doesn't really fit. Evade. Maybe that's a good idea to have evade on this guy. And here's a chance to evade any attacks. Okay, uh, we don't we want don't want to do this for all the characters. So um, let's just take this guy um, with his uh, bow. We're gonna give him a melee weapon as well. And um, yeah, maybe just give him like an axe or something and a small shield. So he's got to put it in his bag. He just can take two items with the um, bags and belts per uh, perk. He can have like two more items. Okay, what do we want to do with this guy? We're going to do as much damage as possible. Um, so we're going to take some offense, uh, offensive skills, um, ballistics. What else do we have? Close combat archer, this is pretty awesome. It's um, when the enemy is really close, you do a lot of extra damage. Okay, we're gonna try this one. And uh, this increases the hit chance uh, on the head, which does a lot more critical hits. Okay, what else do we have? Bullseye. Um, great skill for ranged guys. Um, Victory is at hand, also good because it reduces fatigue every time like, um, an enemy is slain. And now we're going to increase his damage by 20% as well. As you can see, the um, first tier I, uh, perks are usually a lot less attractive than third tier perks, but with your 10 points that you can ma have at maximum, you can only advance to the third tier in one of these three. Um, uh, uh, columns, so really have to be have to be really careful. If you decide to spread your perks between offense, defense, and utility, maybe you won't even be able to get to the second tier, or um, uh, definitely not the third tier. And uh, next thing I want to show you is a, the um, new morale system, or we call it bravery now. Uh, we changed a lot about that and actually in this upcoming scenario you can see um, enemies that attack the bravery of our and challenge the bravery of our battle brothers and be excited. So we're gonna jump into the mission and here you can see the dead cannon. It's uh, really uh, grim and dead so now we have to go on the lookout for the lost patrol. Now that's definitely not our one of our lost brothers. It's a ghoul one of the new enemies. You can notice that this guy is really small and doesn't look very dangerous. But actually he will become more dangerous during the course of the game. And this is one of the really unique features. And this guy will probably run away. Yeah, because the ghoul is, uh, has a special ability, he's, he's able to feast on corpses. And if ghouls devour corpses, uh, they will grow stronger and they can accumulate like um, a lot of stacks this way uh, until they get like really beastly with a lot of hit points and do uh, like a whole lot of damage. So generally you don't want to avoid them from eating the dead. Okay, you can see he's actually uh, standing on a dead brother. So he's gonna eat this guy next turn and he's gonna grow stronger. We have to stop from doing that. Now here's the second new enemy. As you can see, it's a ghost. It's called a lost soul, and um, as you can see, it's a, uh, not really in the physical realm, but it's constantly changing between between the realm of the ghosts and uh, and the real world. This makes them extremely hard to hit, and they also tend to um, use an ability called horrific scream that is actually inducing panic in your brothers. So hopefully 
we're gonna stay strong and not run away like cowards. Here you can see how he ate, ate the poor guy on the floor and grew stronger, he grew bigger. And you also saw um, our new uh, morale system in action. And this guy is this guy's morale. You can see it in green. Is confident now. So you can see this little blue flag. It symbolizes that this guy is not on normal morale, um, but increased morale. That, that means he's confident of winning the battle, granting various bonuses to his combat performance. And same goes for our battle brothers. If we slay an enemy, we can um, actually gain a confidence bonus for our guys. Um, the other way around, if uh, Battle Brothers get slain, our morale will uh, decrease and our combat performance will decrease as well. Okay, let's take a shot. Now we have a close combat archer. This guy is within like two tiles, so if we hit him, he's definitely gonna be dead. But it's only 22% chance to hit, as I told you. Um, hitting a lost soul is like really, sm really slim chances. Nice, that was actually a great hit. It's gonna shoot at the group. And that was pretty awesome as well. This guy is doing short work. Uh, keep in mind that this guy is actually like te level 10 right now. So he has like, uh, not, not 10, but he's using um, the offensive perks. And um, that makes him a lot stronger than he would usually be. I don't want to go too close to the ghost. There you heard like the, um, his scream ability. That actually he tried to um, to panic Harkon, but uh, luckily for us it didn't succeed. Okay, there are more ghouls, and they will try to to eat the dead and grow stronger. I really want to rush my guys over there and stop them from eating the dead. This guy is actually doing short work of all the enemies, and now he will probably hit the lost soul. Let's take an aim shot. Very nice. Okay, Alfred, you're definitely earning your money today. You can see that um, Harkon, by killing the enemy, he had a chance to increase his morale. And he actually did so, so now he's confident, giving him an, uh, a combat bonus. Um, the morale are, um, the, sorry, the ghouls are actually belonging to the undead faction. But um, they are not undead, they are living creatures, and because of that, they are. Uh, they are affected by uh, bravery and morale as well. You can see that they are beelining for the dead corpse uh, because they really want to eat and grow stronger. But luckily I intercepted this guy and we're gonna uh, chop his head off. Not really. You saw his um, morale dropping as he um, as he lost a lot of hit points, his morale dropped as well. You can see that with his little white flag he's not fleeing but he's uh, wavering and um, that means that he will be fleeing uh, soon. Now we use our um, weapon, it's a military cleaver. It's an actually a pretty awesome weapon that um, affects morale as well because it has a decapitate skill and this skill allows us uh, to um, uh, increase the chance of a fatality. Fatality is like chopping the head off of someone and this will decrease the morale of, uh, of uh, bystanders even further, even more than normally killing a guy. I hope this is a hit because then we're gonna see a head flying through the air. And there you go. Unfortunately none of the other ghouls were scared by this display of, uh, uh, of heads flying around. Let's rush this guy up. We want to stop this ghoul from eating the dead, so I'm gonna go out of my way and try to stun him with a knockout. Successfully, so he won't be able to make any... Uh, to make any um, uh, attempts of eating the dead guy. Okay, my range guy, if I go here and I make use of the close combat archer, then I won't be able to shoot anymore, so... We're gonna stay pretty far in the back and try to shoot this guy. He's definitely running up because to the buffet because he's hungry. That was definitely a miss. Okay, maybe you can intercept these ghouls in the middle. Let's see what they're doing. They're using their claws, they don't use weapons. The ghouls are ferocious beasts and um, are not very intelligent and uh, they usually will use their, their claws or teeth to attack and they don't wear any armor. 
and so they're pretty easy to kill uh, as long as they didn't have a, have a good lunch. Let's kill this guy. Nice, well done. There's even more ghouls coming. You can see that these ghouls... This guy is pretty beasty right now. You can see that he's as big as the Battle Brothers, or even bigger. And you can see the difference between this small guy and this really big and massive ghoul. Now he's getting an uh, increased um, hit points, increased defense, and also does a lot of more da a lot more damage. So I really want to focus my attempts on this guy now. You can see his increased defense at work, like working right now. I didn't hit him. Okay, these guys are perfectly lined up for a um, for a split. That's a skill that hits like two. Uh, tiles in in uh, in line. <laughs> Great! That was actually a really awesome strike. You can see that all the, our other battle brothers standing around uh, gain a morale boost by this awesome attack. And now I have to protect all these dead uh, bodies from from the other ghouls. Okay, let's try and kill this guy. We have a good chance. Well then. And now we also stop these guys from coming here to the bodies. I don't want to shoot this guy because uh, my other battle brother is standing in the way. So just move up. There's still more coming. Against the ghouls it's, it's always a, um, a downhill or uphill fight. As soon as they manage to um, to freely eat the dead, you have a big, pretty big problem. You have to stop them in the small. You can see that I re uh, it's really difficult now to hit this guy, and he also has increased hit points. Maybe I can decapitate him. <laughs> and there he goes. I think it look it's looking pretty grim. I had, I had some lucky hits with my guys, and the undead were very unlucky. Good for me. Okay, let's mop up the rest of the undead. He tried to escape and that's why I got a free attack on him. So so you don't get confused. Now I'm just rushing in because I suppose there are not many enemies left and um all my guys are confident, giving them a good combat boost. So I'm becoming confident as well. Uh, there's not not a big chance that I'm losing this one. Especially with this Alfred, he's um, he's a crazy marksman. He's hitting, making all the all the shots count. And also Ragnar, you can see that his um, his skill setup or perk setup is uh, working really well with it. He's he's having absolutely no issues with his fatigue, and he's de he will definitely be one shotting most enemies, anyways. There's another effect you can see from the military cleaver. It's a bleeding effect. This guy will lose health. Um, but anyways, we're gonna open up the veins a little more with a fatality. I missed, unfortunately. And now Alfred can uh, finish his job. And there we go, that was it. Actually, I uh, pretty much steamrolled the ghouls, but um, that's not a big wonder. The ghouls are meant to be early game opponents, and my bad brothers in this scenario have a heavily armored, have um, a lot of perk points, put into them making them even stronger and I was also lucky with a lot of good hits in the early game. So um, there you have it and um, I hope you're gonna stay tuned for the next video and there you go. All the best.